a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. 2018 Atlantic Hurricane Season The 2018 Atlantic Hurricane Season is an ongoing event in the annual formation of tropical cyclones in the Northern Hemisphere. The season officially began on June 1, 2018, and will end on November 30, 2018. These dates historically describe the period each year when most tropical cyclones form in the Atlantic Basin and are adopted by convention. However, tropical cyclogenesis is possible at any time of the year. As shown by the formation of subtropical storm Alberta on May 25, marking the fourth consecutive year in which a storm developed before the official start of the season. The next storm, Beryl, became the first hurricane to form in the eastern Atlantic during the month of July since Bertha in 2008. Chris, upgraded to a hurricane on July 10, became the earliest second hurricane in a season since 2005. On September 5, Florence became the first major hurricane of the season. On September 12, Joyce formed, making 2018 the first season since 2008 to feature four named storms active simultaneously. With the formation of Leslie on September 23, the season is the first on record to see six subtropical storms. On October 9, Michael became the second major hurricane of the season. Underscore TOC underscore Seasonal forecasts Ahead of and during the season, several national meteorological services and scientific agencies forecast how many named storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes will form during a season and or how many tropical cyclones will affect a particular country. These agencies include the Tropical Storm Risk Consortium of University College London. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and Colorado State University. The forecasts include weekly and monthly changes and significant factors that help determine the number of tropical storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes within a particular year. Some of these forecasts also take into consideration what happened in previous seasons and an ongoing La Nina event that had recently formed in November 2017. On average, an Atlantic hurricane season between 1981 and 2010 contained 12 tropical storms, 6 hurricanes, and 3 major hurricanes, with an accumulated cyclone energy index of between 66 and 103 units. Pre-season outlooks The first forecast for the year was released by TSR on December 7, 2017, which predicted a slightly above-average season in 2018 with a total of 15 named storms, 7 hurricanes, and 3 major hurricanes. On April 5, 2018, CSU released its forecast, predicting a slightly above-average season with 14 named storms, 7 hurricanes, and 3 major hurricanes. TSR released its second forecast on the same day, predicting a slightly below-average hurricane season with 12 named storms, 6 hurricanes, and 2 major hurricanes, the reduction in both the number and size of storms compared to its first forecast being due to recent anomalous cooling in the far northern and tropical Atlantic. Several days later, on April 16, North Carolina State University released its predictions, forecasting an above-average season, with 14 18 named storms, 7-11 hurricanes, and 3-5 major hurricanes. On April 19, the weather company released its first forecasts, predicting 2018 to be a near-average season, with a total of 13 named storms, 7 hurricanes, and 2 major hurricanes. On May 24, NOAA released their first forecasts, calling for a near-to-above-average season in 2018. On May 25, the UK Met Office released their prediction, 
predicting 11 tropical storms, 6 hurricanes, and an accumulated cyclone energy value of approximately 105 units. In contrast, on May 30, TSR released their updated prediction, significantly reducing their numbers to 9 named storms, 4 hurricanes and 1 major hurricane, citing a sea surface temperature setup analogous of those observed during the cool phase of the Atlantic multidictal oscillation. On May 31, one day before the season officially began, CSU updated their forecast to include subtropical storm Alberto, also decreasing their numbers due to anomalous cooling in the tropical and far northern Atlantic. Mid-season outlooks On July 2, CSU updated their forecast once more, lowering their numbers again to 11 named storms four hurricanes, and one major hurricane, citing the continued cooling in the Atlantic, and an increasing chance of El Nino forming later in the year. TSR released their fourth forecast on July 5, retaining the same numbers as their previous forecast. On August 2, CSU updated their forecast again, increasing their numbers to 12 named storms, five hurricanes, and one major hurricane citing the increasing chance of a weak El Niño forming later in the year. Four days later, TSR issued their final forecast for the season, slightly increasing their numbers to 11 named storms, five hurricanes and only one major hurricane, with the reason of having two unexpected hurricanes forming by the beginning of July. On August 9, 2018, NOAA revised its predictions, forecasting a below-average season with 913 named storms, four seven hurricanes, and zero two major hurricanes for all of the 2018 season. Subtropical Storm Alberto A broad area of low pressure formed over the southwestern Caribbean Sea on May 21, as the result of the interaction between an upper-level low and a weak surface trough. The low drifted slowly westward, and then northward through the Caribbean Sea as it gradually organized. By 1500 hours UTC on May 25, the strongly sheared low had organized sufficiently to be classified as subtropical storm Alberto while situated about 55 miles south of Cozumel, Quintana Roo, which made this season the fourth consecutive season in which storms formed earlier than the official start of the season on June 1. After remaining nearly stationary for the next day, Alberto began to move northwards. After entering the Gulf of Mexico, where wind shear lessened and sea surface temperatures were above average, Alberto began to intensify. Early on May 28, it reached its peak intensity with maximum sustained winds of 65 miles per hour. Afterward, it began to weaken as it neared the Gulf Coast, making landfall near Laguna Beach, Florida, at 2100 hours UTC with winds of 45 miles per hour. The cyclone weakened to a subtropical depression shortly after landfall, later becoming tropical over Tennessee. On May 31, Alberta finally transitioned to a post-tropical cyclone while over northern Michigan. The remnant low was subsequently absorbed by a frontal system over Ontario on the next day. Hurricane Beryl Late on July 3, the NHC began tracking a vigorous tropical wave over the eastern tropical Atlantic for tropical cyclone development. The tropical wave quickly coalesced as it moved westward, and at 1500 hours UTC on July 5, it organized into a tropical depression while situated over the central tropical Atlantic Ocean. Favorable environmental conditions allowed the tiny system to strengthen, becoming tropical storm barrel by 1830 UTC and further intensifying into a Category 1 hurricane by 6 o'clock UTC on July 6 as a pinhole eye became evident. Upon designation as a hurricane, it became the second earliest on record in the main development region, surpassed only by 1933's Hurricane 2. This intensity was short-lived, as accelerating low-level flow imparted shear on the cyclone and caused it to weaken back to tropical storm strength by 1500 hours UTC on July 7. An Air Force reconnaissance aircraft investigated the system early the next morning, 
finding that Beryl had degenerated into an open trough. The NHC declassified Beryl as a tropical cyclone at 2100 hours UTC on July 8. Accordingly, the remnants were monitored for several days, although little organization occurred during much of that time. However, conditions gradually became more favorable for redevelopment, and on July 14 at 1700 hours UTC, Beryl regenerated into a subtropical storm near Bermuda. The rejuvenated storm soon began to lose convection, as dry air infiltrated the system. By 3 o'clock UTC on July 16, Beryl degenerated into a remnant low once again. After having lacked organized convection for more than 12 hours, Hurricane Chris Late on July 2, the NHC began monitoring the potential for an area of low pressure to form near Bermuda in a low pressure circulation. A non-tropical low formed a few hundred miles south of Bermuda on July 3. Shower and thunderstorm activity gradually became better defined as the low moved generally northwestward into the Gulf Stream. At 2100 hours UTC on July 6, the low organized into Tropical Depression 3. While located off the coast of North Carolina, strengthening of the depression was slow due to the circulation being elongated. Nevertheless, at 9 o'clock UTC on July 8, Tropical Depression 3 was upgraded into Tropical Storm Chris. Although it was forecast to strengthen into a hurricane the following day, dry air intrusion and upwelling caused by the storm resulted in little strengthening throughout the day. However, Chris was able to mix the dry air out of its circulation as it accelerated northeastward into warmer waters the following day. With a well-defined eye and impressive appearance on satellite imagery, Chris finally strengthened into a hurricane at 2100 hours UTC on July 10, at 3 o'clock UTC on the next morning. Chris rapidly intensified to Category 2 hurricane status, as a convected ring in its core transformed into a full I-1. However, the hurricane's eye later became ragged and ill-defined, resulting in it weakening to Category 1 intensity at 2100 hours UTC on July 11. As the storm continued to cross the Gulf Stream, Chris further weakened below hurricane strength at 9 o'clock UTC on the following morning. By this time, Chris had begun to undergo an extra-tropical transition and also experienced an expanding wind field. Chris transitioned to an extra-tropical cyclone as it merged with the frontal system, about six hours later. On July 7, a man drowned in rough seas attributed to the storm at Kildeville Hills, North Carolina. As an extratropical cyclone, the system brought locally heavy rain and gusty winds to Newfoundland and Labrador. Rainfall accumulations peaked at 76 mm in Gander, while gusts reached 96 km per hour in Ferryland. Rainfall accumulations were highest on Sable Island, at 111.6 mm. Tropical Storm Debbie On August 4, the NHC began monitoring a non-tropical low over the northern Atlantic Ocean for tropical or subtropical development. Initially, convection remained very limited, with the system consisting mostly of a convectionless swirl interacting with an upper-level low. However, as the system moved into a more favorable environment it gradually began to acquire subtropical characteristics. At 1500 hours UTC on August 7, the low had developed sufficiently organized convection to be classified as subtropical storm Debbie. The storm slowly gained tropical characteristics as it traveled northwards. And by 9 o'clock UTC on August 8, Debbie became fully tropical, with sustained winds increasing to 45 miles per hour. Despite marginal ocean temperatures, Debbie continued to strengthen peaking with maximum sustained winds of 50 miles per hour. Afterward, Debbie began to weaken as it began to lose tropical characteristics. At 2100 hours UTC on August 9, Debbie degenerated into a post-tropical cyclone, as it accelerated northeastward ahead of a short-wave trough. Tropical Storm Ernesto a complex non-tropical low-pressure system formed over the northern Atlantic on August 12. 
As the low drifted southeastward and slowly weakened, a new low formed to the east of the system on August 14. The new low quickly acquired subtropical characteristics, and by 9 o'clock UTC on August 15, the low had organized sufficiently to be classified as a subtropical depression at 1500 hours UTC that same day. The depression became subtropical storm Ernesto. On August 16, the storm attempted to transition into a fully tropical cyclone, as convection started to form near the center, however, it soon decayed. Nevertheless, another burst of convection formed near the center a few hours later, indicating that Ernesto successfully transitioned into a tropical cyclone. On August 17, Ernesto began accelerating towards the northeast. As the system was caught up in the jet stream, the next day, the storm transitioned into an extra-tropical cyclone. The remnants of Ernesto impacted Ireland and the United Kingdom on August 19. Hurricane Florence On August 28, the NHC first mentioned the possibility of tropical cyclone formation from a tropical wave expected to exit Western Africa. Two days later, the tropical wave moved off the coast of Senegal. With disorganized thunderstorms and a well-defined low-pressure area, due to the system's threat to the Cape Verde Islands, the NHC initiated advisories on potential tropical cyclone 6 at 1500 hours UTC on August 30. The system organized into Tropical Depression 6 at 2100 hours UTC on August 31st. Early on September 1st, Tropical Depression 6 strengthened into Tropical Storm Florence. Gradual intensification occurred as Florence continued west-northwestward across the Central Atlantic, and at 1500 hours UTC on September 4th, it intensified into the third hurricane of the season. On September 5th, Florence unexpectedly underwent rapid intensification into a Category 3 major hurricane. Rapid intensification continued and at 2100 hours UTC, Florence intensified into a Category 4 hurricane at farther northeast than any previous Category 4 hurricane in the Atlantic during the satellite era. However, rapid intensification caused the now stronger storm to veer northwards into a zone of greater vertical wind shear. Over the next 30 hours, Florence rapidly weakened into a tropical storm due to the strong wind shear, with the storm's cloud pattern becoming distorted. After entering a zone of less shear and crossing into warmer waters, Florence re-strengthened into a hurricane on September 9. On the next day, Florence underwent a second period of rapid intensification and re-intensified into a major hurricane, at 1600 hours UTC on the same day. Florence re-intensified into a Category 4 hurricane. Before impacting the coast however, Florence underwent an Iowa replacement cycle and encountered moderate wind shear, weakening it to a Category 2 hurricane. Florence quickly weakened into a tropical depression inland, and the NHC issued its last advisory at 10 o'clock UTC on September 16, passing on responsibility to the Weather Prediction Center. At that point, Florence had also begun to gradually accelerate westward. On September 17, Florence slowly turned to the northeast, while continuing to weaken. Late on the same day, Florence weakened into a remnant low. While situated over West Virginia, Florence still posed a threat inland as it dumped tremendous amounts of rain on the eastern seaboard. The system finally dissipated in the open Atlantic on September 19. Florence posed a major threat to the east coast of the United States, especially North Carolina and South Carolina, which declared states of emergency, along with Virginia, Maryland, and Washington. DC The NHC issued its first hurricane watches at 9 o'clock UTC on September 11. Tropical Storm Gordon On August 30, the 
the NHC began monitoring a tropical disturbance over the North Central Caribbean, giving it a 30% chance of development within five days. Gradual organization occurred as the system moved northwestward toward the Bahamas, and at 1800 hours UTC on September 2, it was designated Potential Tropical Cyclone 7. As it was forecasted to impact land areas as a tropical storm within two days, at 12.05 UTC on the next morning, the system organized into Tropical Storm Gordon while moving over the Florida Keys. Although the storm intensified slightly as it moved over southern Florida, the core became disrupted and the associated convection became disorganized, emerging over the Gulf of Mexico late on September 3. Gordon began to strengthen further and become more organized, with a band of deep convection developing near the small core of the system. Late on September 4, Gordon reached its peak intensity with maximum sustained winds of 70 miles per hour shortly before making landfall just west of the Alabama-Mississippi border. After making landfall, Gordon weakened into a tropical depression. The NHC issued its last advisory at 4 p.m. CDT on Wednesday, September 5, moving further inland and quickly weakening. Gordon lingered over the southeastern United States for the next two days, before finally degenerating into a remnant low on September 8. The remnants of Gordon continued across the northeast, dropping heavy amounts of rain, before being absorbed by another frontal system over New England. On September 12, Hurricane Helene. On September 7, the NHC began monitoring an area of disturbance near Senegal, developing from a tropical wave emerging from the coast of West Africa. The system had been forecast to develop a tropical depression in the previous days. The system rapidly organized near the west coast of Africa and was designated as potential tropical cyclone 8. At 12 o'clock UTC on September 7, just off the coast of Africa, as it was threatening to impact the Cape Verde Islands. The system continued to organize, and on the same day, it became Tropical Depression 8. The system later strengthened into Tropical Storm Helene on the same day. On September 9, Helene strengthened into a Category 1 hurricane, with winds of 85 miles per hour at Trailing 2015's Hurricane Fred is the easternmost hurricane to form in the main development region during the satellite era. Helene strengthened into a Category 2 hurricane at 1500 hours UTC on September 10, but quickly weakened into a tropical storm at 1500 hours UTC on September 13. Tropical storm watches were issued for the Azores at 2100 hours UTC on September 13 which were upgraded to Tropical Storm Warnings at 9 o'clock UTC on September 14. From September 13-14, Helene interacted with a smaller Tropical Storm Joyce to the west, due to the Fujiwara effect, steering Joyce counterclockwise around the larger system. Afterward, Helene began accelerating toward the northeast, passing over the Azores late on September 15. On September 16, Helene transitioned into an extratropical cyclone while accelerating toward the British Isles, becoming the first named storm of the 2018-19 European windstorm season. On September 18, Helene moved across the northern periphery of Ireland, before drifting into the Norwegian Sea. On September 22, Helena's remnant was absorbed into another extratropical storm approaching from the southwest. Heavy rainfall from the precursor tropical wave in Guinea triggered flooding, which claimed three lives in Doko on September 6, as a tropical cyclone. Helene passed close to Santa Cruz das Flores in the Azores with winds of up to 62 miles per hour on September 15. After completing an extratropical transition, Storm Helene continued onwards to impact Ireland and the United Kingdom. Weather warnings forecasting winds of up to 65 miles per hour were issued for southern and western areas of the United Kingdom. However, Helene weakened considerably as it approached the British Isles, and all weather warnings were discontinued on September 18, as Helene was crossing northern England with only minimal impacts. 
brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?